Hello and welcome to Dark Fit Harry. You are joining me on a very rainy, drizzly week in Brussels. Welcome to new subscribers. Welcome back to those who already know me. So I have seen this tag 10 forever cards in several videos now and I know Nova Luna Tarot has begun this tag. Thank you so much Nova for starting it and also for tagging myself and many others in this <laughs> in your video. I went back and I had a look at your video and I realized just how beautiful this tag is. So the way I'm approaching it is looking at 10 cards that have really been a formidable moment in my life. Now, unfortunately, because, or fortunately, I love these decks and I love many other decks as well. And so sometimes there's gonna be more than one card from that deck, but it really is kind of like a journey that I'm going through and I've picked particular cards from the, these decks that highlight it. And that's how I'm approaching this tag. I think there's many ways to approach this tag. There's like favorite colors and shapes and uh, themes and whatever. Um, but I've approached it in this manner. These are just tarot decks. I have not included oracle decks because there's like a whole tag separate that I could do with just oracles. So this is just my 10 tarot forever cards basically. So with all of that introduction in there, let's begin straight away. And the very first card, and I've, hold on one moment because I just wanna make sure I see my list properly. Okay, so one of the first decks I wanna show is um, a deck that I worked with some time ago. I'm just trying to juggle everything here. And that is the Dream Keepers Tarot by Liz Houston. I worked with this and I think it was early 2022. I think it was, I can't remember. Um, I did a whole month with this deck. I absolutely love this deck. This is one of my favorite decks of all time. I won't show you all the cards because we'll be here forever. But this deck is um, amazing. The guidebook is phenomenal. Highly underrated deck on Tarot Tube, I think. But let me show you the cards that I picked out for this particular deck because and why I picked them. So here they are. If I can get to them carefully. Okay. So the very first card that I wanted to show you was the Queen of Pentacles. And the reason I'm gonna show you the Queen of Pentacles, let me bring her up a little bit actually so you can have a better look, is because this card, um, when I was looking at this, when I was originally working with this, it's a very, very strong reminder of my mother. She doesn't look like this, but it's a really strong reminder of that matriarch who is strong and powerful and grounded. My mother is a Capricorn. I've spoken about this a lot on the channel. And because we're different energies, myself and herself, she really has been instrumental in teaching me something that is outside of my element, basically. And I just loved this Queen of Pentacles. The pentacle in her horns is just phenomenal. That Capricorn energy is just, yeah, I can't speak enough about it. I just love it. And um, the, the roses that are coming up from her, it's just, it's like a quintessential earth mother. What more can I want from an earth mother? And of course, always the little bunnies here, you know, that's very reminiscent of the Queen of Pentacles. Um, I just love it. Um, I always feel she harks back to the Empress, very, very strong there. You know, all the Queens come back to, for me, the Empress and the High Priestess, the Strength card. The women of the Mages really play a role for me when it comes to the women of the Court cards such powerful feminine divine energies coming through here. And um, and I just love it. I love her clothing. I love this grand bustier that she's wearing, The just the whole thing. And it's beautiful artwork. And I, I really love Liz Houston's art in this, basically. So the card after this is this one, which is, you know, it just is spring. So this is Demeter and of course Hades. And this is her also becoming part of the land, you know, because she's in this relationship with him. Of course, we have, again, this Aries energy coming through because we are now looking at, you know, the, the, the seasons between kind of like Belton and Samhain, between kind of the underworld and between uh, the, the darkness and spring going into autumn and then going in back into spring. So we have this kind of like juxtaposition. And again, I just love this two of cups and how it was um, embodied in this. Sorry, I should have said this, there is nudity in this. Um, I just really like the fact that she's also becoming part of the earth. And whenever I think of this deck, this is one of the images that always pops out at me. So I had to include it. And then finally, I have to put in here the two of wands 
because there was a moment when I was working with this deck where I had a real two of ones moment, which was plan carefully, think carefully. And the way she's kind of like having to balance things and this beautiful red robe. I mean, it was again, really just about this, this act that as I make the plans to make sure that wherever I step, I've thought about it and considered it. And I just really, again, love the, the outfit in this, the costume, the clothing. It's just, this is just exquisite and it pops out at me. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to really talk about these three cards from the Dreamkeeper's Tarot, one of my ultimate favorite tarot decks. So the card that I want to show after this, and there's so many here. So let me now go through and yes, be prepared. There's going to be a lot here, but the one that I want to show next is from a Llewellyn deck. I do have a few Llewellyn here and it's Tower of the Hidden Realm by Julia Jeffrey, um, guidebook by Barbara Moore. Um, of course, the Witch Sister has just been released as well. So that's a deck that I will, of course, be adding to my collection and doing a full review on. But let's talk about Tower of the Hidden Realm and the cards that really stand out for me from that deck. And again, they're part of my journey. So that's why I've got to include them. So the very first card is the moon card. The Tower of the Hidden Realm has an amazing moon card. I mean, she's on her knees, she's struggling. This is hard work. <laughs> There's a delusionment. I mean, she's delusioned. There's a disillusion. Uh, she looks very lost. And to be quite honest with you, whenever I look at this card, I feel like she's a little bit blinded. It's almost like she can't actually see. Her eyes are open, but she's not seeing well. And, um, and I think this is classic of Julia Jeffrey's artwork that she really knows how to, through expression, through the eyes, through the body language, show you and convey the whole meaning. So that's the moon card. The card after I want to show you is the Eight of Swords. I really, really feel this energy. Um, I have gone through a lot of Eight of Swords moments in my life, but there's something about this that is just so sad because she's trapped within herself. So the feathers for me really, again, portray being trapped within ourselves, but they're a source of comfort as well. Feathers, remember, for birds, they save them, right? They allow them to fly. They allow them to be warm. They allow them to build nests because, of course, leftover shedded feathers also build nests. Um, they take care of the young. They're a sign of when a bird goes from being a baby to a fully grown adult. And so she's trapped within her own, in a way, just, you know, her own making. And it's the bloodshot eyes that always catch me on this card. I've actually shown this card so many times on my channel. I love it. I absolutely love it. And of course, finally, she's in chain mail. This is a warrior who's going nowhere. And I just love that. It's just like, it's so true to how sometimes I felt. And the final card I want to show is the Justice card, which of course is the front of the, like the cover um, for the box as well. And the reason why I have to show the Justice card, of course, is because um, I I once had this deck off my like shelf, like I don't know, at least a year with with this deck showing. Um, so every time I walked past, I would see Tower of the Hidden Realm, and there was a moment when I realized she was she was like basically looking at me. She was like. Are you balancing things well? Are you being clear? She was asking me. Like, are you doing the right thing? And it was so, like, there was a there was a powerful moment where I realized I just felt like, okay, there is a message here from the Justice card. Beautifully done again. You can see here the feather. So the next Luan deck I will show you is, of course, my beloved. Forest of Enchantment. How could I do a video without the Forest of Enchantment in there? Oh, she has to come along. So, of course, it's by Linnea Weatherstone, illustrated by Marilea Olwood. Again, I'm going to butcher that, I know. And I, it's another Llewellyn deck, of course, um, and I love this deck. Now, I'm not, sorry, I don't need to open the box. What am I doing? Let me get the cards for this deck. Okay, so the very, very first card, because it reminds me of home, I have to show you, is the world card. The rolling hills, I mean, the whole thing just reminds me of home. It reminds me of our countryside in the UK, just driving along and you just see these beautiful vistas. The more north you go, the more you're gonna see rolling hills. The further south we get, the more it gets flat, to be quite honest. <laughs> but the more north you go towards um, 
towards Cumbria and, and, and towards, I mean, we're not, we don't even have to be up at the Scottish border. If you go up to like just further than central England, if you go towards Wales, uh, northwest England, northeast England, we just have this gorgeous countryside when you have um, places such as Derby and then you go into Lancashire and Yorkshire and you know the places that I'm talking about, they're just gorgeous and this really reminds me of home. So I, I had to include this one. Again, it's another moon card, but this is like bewitched bunnies. That's how I want to say it, bewitched hares. And it's just so powerful. I mean, they've been drinking something, that's for sure. <laughs> From They've been dr drinking this like moonlit water. And I find like they're a little bit enchanted and a little bit off, like off with the fairies. And you can see here the little sigils that are, that are coming alive. And, and it's just the whole card just speaks of enchantment to me that it's called the enchanted forest or so the forest of enchantment and the card speaks enchantment and then the final card that i want to show you is one of my favorite cards of all time i think which is the four of swords in this deck the four of challenges and this was very very personal this card came up at a moment where it was so dark i remember it was um autumn 2021 when I used this deck it was November 2021 so it was two years ago and it was it was like I had to I was making radical changes with some of my personal relationships and family relationships and that those words is how I felt and yet in the middle of that there's this tree growing and the guidebook talks about you know resting in this place and taking like power and courage and rest and reprieve and that it's okay and th this this tree for me blossomed in the middle of a very very dark space and I held on to it especially when I went running I went I held on to this card in my mind that even in the darkest places things blossom they grow there is new life coming through and it was almost like this this card was telling me the promise that it's going to be okay you know I promise you it's going to be okay and I have a really strong relationship with trees. I think many of us do, but I, I, because I'm running, I really feel it like the trees are like my safe space, you know? And this card was so powerful at saying, just hold on and I'm here for you and you can sit with me and I will be here for you. And that's how I felt. So yeah, I, hopefully one day I can get a print of this card because it's so beautiful. So, and I think what I understand from Linnea Weatherston was this is one of the first cards I think that Marilea had also drawn, which was quite unusual, but um, yeah. So, let me just check I'm getting all, got through all of this. Okay, right. So the next deck is The Everyday Witch. This is artwork by Elizabeth Alba, um, uh, guidebook by Deborah Blake. Just before I forget, the oracles of both of these decks, I think is 2024, but there's oracles. No, the oracle for this, sorry, apologies, has already come out, but apparently there's a black cat deck that's being produced. And there's an oracle for this that's being produced. So let me get that right. A new tarot deck, which is, I think, based upon the cat from this deck. I think I might be wrong. And there's an oracle deck for this coming out. So... Sorry, I had to digress there, but I wanted to make sure I get that right. So this is the Everyday Witch Tarot, another Llewellyn deck. And let me show you my favorite cards of this deck because I do have some favorite cards. Let me also find them because they're in here somewhere. Hold on a moment. Here they are. I found them. Okay, so the very first card is the Nine of Swords. There's a lot of swords in this. And again, this was a really great reminder. I think I can't remember when I did the review for this deck, but... This was a really good reminder, like, because my cat does this, by the way. If I'm just sitting there, he'll come along and he will kind of like put his paw on me. Usually it's to say, please feed me. But anyway, <laughs> I love this because the sun is rising and the canary is singing. So there's so much in here that's saying it's not all gone. Like, it's not. But she can't see that. And I just love how it's been portrayed. A great deck here. So after this, I think there's only two cards for this one, yeah, is the Five of Cups. And I wanted to show this because this is a very special card for me. I am a Five of Cups person. Um, and, you know, she's crying because they're gone. And I just love this deck again because the cat's sitting there with a whole feast. Like there's bread, there's a lobster, there's two cups, 
a bottle of wine, and balloons are flying. I mean, it just really speaks about how much I can lose myself in all the things that I've lost and forget the fantastic offering just to the side. It's just, that's what this whole thing says to me, you know, that look what you're missing. There's a party going on behind you. And yeah, I really find this such a powerful card for myself. Um, I just love the Everyday Witch because it really has given me some beautiful messages. And I, I, I had a, parts of my life that have just been so, for me personally, I won't go into them difficult, that I actually lost my memory of certain years from when I was younger because I just, I couldn't cope. And retrieving a lot of myself cards and uh, like this and, and images like this have helped me to just say you know that as I work through them um, you know that part of me that younger part of me it's okay um, but I really relate to this because it was very very hard and very lonely at some point so yeah so there's so much right so let me now talk about a couple of decks that like have been really, again, it's just so, it's tough, but they've been there for me. So this is the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. Now I have never done a full review of this deck. I have worked with this deck, but I've never done an official review. It's by Phyllis Currett and artwork by Daniel Barlow. Now I know that there's now a pocket version out. This is a deck by Hay House and you can, it's very easily readily available. The reason why I never did a full review of this, and I'm going to explain it as we look at the cards together, so let me get the cards as well, is um, this deck was on my desk when I received news that somebody had passed away. And it was a, it was like bleak. It was January 2021. We were in a, like a lockdown where I couldn't, I mean, I just like the, the, the level of lockdown where, where I was living was just phenomenal. And um, this deck was on my desk. And I, I kind of like couldn't do a review because to be quite honest, I wasn't really paying attention to it. It was more like there, but I wasn't there. I like checked out. So I hope everybody understands, but I was just kind of like at the end of the month going, what am I gonna say? Cause like, I can't even put two, two words together, like two sentences together at this moment. So anyway, this deck still stays with me because it's so important, but it's kind of like a, I don't know where I'm going with this deck. That's how I'm going to say it. <laughs> so um, the cards from this deck, I mean, the, the artwork is phenomenal, but I'm going to show you a few cards. I love the wheel card in this, um, the artwork and the way that the seasons are there. Just all the different sabots are portrayed, uh, the different points in the wheel of the year. Absolutely gorgeous. And look at that spider right in the middle, a stunning card. So that's one of them. The next card out of all of this is the Six of Air, and this really speaks to that point in my journey where it was really difficult. Um, I can't remember, it was like maybe a few days after I knew that the person had passed, this card came up and I just felt that mist and that I need to move forward somehow, but it was all very, very murky. So I remember this card, I remember looking at it and just trying to do a day at that moment. And then the card after this was the Three of Fire. And again, I've had such strong path working um, meditations with this card. It's one of the cards that I actually take out and just meditate with. So this deck really is more of an oracle deck for me, I guess. I don't know how else to put it. It's a path working deck. I will sit and go into this card. Um, it's just so beautiful. It's so strong. There's a few cards that are very similar in this kind of look of, going into the woods, but I really identify with it because it's cold and our woods here, you know, in the winter, they are cold. They're not, it's like a swamp. Basically, Northwest Europe is a cold swamp. So we have like flooded bogs and spaces like that, but they're very, very cold, you know, and um, this card really speaks to that form, uh, to that, um, when I look at it, it reminds me again of, of being at one with my elements so that was the Witch's Wisdom Tarot. After this, let me show you now a couple of decks that have also been really fundamental. Now they kind of like go together a little bit, which is the Guy in Tarot and the Her Crafters Tarot. And I'm gonna speak about them a little bit together because I think that makes sense. So there's cards from both of these decks that have been really, really huge in my journey again. 
So when I started working with the guy in tarot, it was, uh, yeah, it was in June of 2022. And yeah, this was when things were not good. And the very first card that came out was the three of air. Uh, and this person's journaling and they're furiously writing and they're trying to clear up their mind. And that was, it was part of where I was at. Like I was filling journals at that point. And you can see behind them, they have so much information, but they're just, and there's a three of, three of the traditional Rider Waite Smith there. So it's like they are journaling on their pain and what they're feeling. So this was a very, very strong card. The very first card that came out of the deck when I was working with it was three of air. And that was exactly actually how my month went. <laughs> so that was one of the cards. And the next one, of course, is the tower and lightning in this deck. And this card came up three times in one month. So you know how that month was going. It was rough. I mean, I like the tower card because I think it's a very necessary card, but it was rough. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. Interestingly, at the same time, <coughs> in order to make sense, of the month and everything and that that deck I I actually went and got the herb crafters tarot out because of course it's one of my favorite decks and interestingly I've never done a full review of this deck either but anyway it's one of my favorite decks so there was one time when I pulled this out well and I kid you not I pulled out a card from the herb crafters to go with it and it was it it was the tower, the mushroom card. It was almost like they were speaking together, like um, this is this is your day right now. <laughs> this is the energy for the week kind of thing. It was just so clear that they were giving me very, very powerful messages. The tower came up also by, with, with other guy and tarot decks, basic uh, cards uh, in the month. So it was almost like the herb crafters and the guy and tarot were working together to help me get through that month which was so painful which was again you know june 2022 so there was like the last few years have had a lot of change for me and <laughs> these two cards were just like at one point i was just like really really can you can you tell me any more that today is going to have a tower moment and then finally i want to show you another card from the herb crafters because i love that deck and it's one of my favorite cards of all time this was the card that made me think i have to do this tag yeah, it's my three of cups. It's three of water. Look at that. She's, I mean, like I have memories of making my own little picnic and putting a little doll on the on the chair because I didn't have anyone to play with. <laughs> and then like making my own like tea and, and biscuits and stuff like that. And, you know, playing along and pretending. And, and, and my mom would be like, yeah, just, just do that so that I can do other things. And yeah, I just, I have memories of this and just entertaining myself and my, I think we, in England, we used to call it a Wendy house. I don't know what they call it elsewhere, but we used to call it a Wendy house where it's like a little kid's play house thing where you go in and you pretend like, yeah, so this is my space kind of thing. And yeah, I have such strong memories. And this, this card just makes me like smile. It makes me just leap for joy. And I love it. So there you go. That's the three of cups or the three of water from the herb crafters. So now we're moving forward in this journey. Wow, I'm getting through a lot here. So let's now go to some of the decks from more recent times because this is such a long video. I'm so sorry. So the deck, so the card that I want to show you now is from Murder of Crows, Tarot by Crowder Roy. This is a Low Scarabeo production. So the card that I want to show you, there's two. But let me first talk about the Seven of Swords, more sword energy, there you go. So the Seven of Swords came up early this year. And as soon as I saw this card, it was so clear. It was like night and day. This is a tone that I'm going to see this year. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but it is. So it's stealth, but it comes at a cost. So for me, this is really about survival, but it's painful. And, you know, there's claws in the back of that. Is that a shrew? Is that a sh I don't know what that is. What kind of rodent? But yeah, I mean, that's a painful ending for that rodent. And that crow's doing what it needs to do to survive. But, you know, this is, <clears throat> this is seven of sword energy. And this really cut through to me. And just the way that the whole drawing is done with this um, sepia tones, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Okay. And then the other card for me is, again, the justice card. So again, justice comes up. <laughs> 
And I really felt her looking at me very, very strong when I saw this card. It was very similar to my feeling with justice from the hidden realm in the sense that sometimes we have to, or I have to, you know, there's, there's a moment where it's like, is this balanced? Is this, is this fair? Am I really thinking of what's right? And I love the fact that in this justice card and in this sword, to me, it feels as if we're looking through the sword and this is a gateway. So the sword is the gateway. The blade is the way through, but it can be painful and it's double-edged. That's what I think when I see this sword. Um, there's parts of her that are just so kind of like, it's almost like I can walk through, but I have to go through a moment of um, balance and really seeing what's right and what's wrong. So that was my time with the matter of crows and keep going keep going okay so the other deck that i have to show you is of course the four axa tarot and the cards from this so this is a deck by mj Cullinane. the deck that i'm showing you is the indie version this is now available mass market from hay house so the two cards that are really powerful for me are i had this summer which was ten of fire the ten of wands and i just love this because in her wings, she's carrying this casket and it's full of some kind of egg and, but it's on fire. You know, it's kind of like, I think these are dragon's eggs or something. Maybe they're about to be birthed, but she's in martyrdom because she's now on her knees. This is not going well. She is in pain. Um, this is just really, really painful for me to look at. And yet I understood this energy, which was like this sacrifice, but the sacrifice is at a great cost. And what is the cost that it's coming at? And um, and at this point, you know, she the, the it's almost like the eggs are like about to launch themselves or they're on fire. I don't know what's going on here, but, and there's volcanoes in the background. So this is very, very fiery energy, but fiery energy at a personal cost. I loved it. And now I have the Ace of Air, which is the Ace of Swords. And I really, really loved this card when I pulled it out. This, this card is in my memory because it was so clear to me that she was saying, these are dragons and I can just, if I just, you know, with her power she, and that sword in her hand, she was able to channel this energy of clarity and say, be gone. You know, it's almost like the Dementors or something. She was saying, be gone. You're chasing me and you're hurting me and I don't need it. And this power of clarity, her feathers are kind of like, you know, just swirling in this, this energy, this spiral that she's creating of, um, I don't know how else to say it, but it's almost like the mind is becoming very, very clear through her work. And so it was a very strong message for me that I need to raise my hand and say enough to my own dragons, basically and clear out that energy and say, okay, it's time, it's time to chase them away and go on. And, um, and you can see these poppies here. So there's growth, there's life, there's energy, but she has to make that decision. So that's potential for me. And I think I'm gonna, I've got two more, so hopefully I can get away with this. <laughs> but the other two cards that I wanna, well, another two decks I wanna show you is, the first one is, the Dark Days Tarot, and I love this deck. I haven't shown it really on my channel, but I have been using this in the background this autumn. And there's a card in here, there's a couple of cards, but let me show you which ones are the ones that are the most, there's one I took out, but yeah, there's a few others that really, really struck me in this card, in this deck, and let me show you the two of them. One is the Nine of Cups. I drew this card at one point, and it was very, very clear to me that, you know, wishes can be fulfilled, but they come with different things. And it's almost as if, if I allow myself to just let go a little bit and enjoy the moment, um, I will see not just what I'm holding, but everything that's available to me that is full of like these, you know, the, the growth and the dreams and the magic and, and the fruits and the, the, the coins and the money. So this was powerful. There's a lot of mermaids in this deck, so I wanted to show you a mermaid card. But the one that really got to me was this card, which is the Page of Swords. Now, the Page of Swords is my stalker card this year, and I'm gonna do a separate video, or I don't know what on that. But this card was very, very clear 
because when I saw this card, I ended up having to do a lot of research and it was very clear the role that I'm playing, <clears throat> not just within my own life, of course, but in the lives of others right now, the energy. And this page of swords with those um, swords coming out of her mouth, so powerful and the fact that we have this moon cycle when you can see it, there's a moon cycle going on here. So this card was very, very powerful in asking me, where are you at basically? This is what it was about and what am I communicating and what am I saying and how am I saying it and where is my mind and so forth. So I wanted to show you that. And now we're at the end. Yes, we're definitely at the end. Two two cards that I want to show you and my final cards are from the Slavic Legends Tarot. I've had this deck for about a year now, but I haven't really gone into it enough, I think, because I really want to study the legends here. And there's two cards that are absolutely divine and I wanted to end the video on two beautiful cards. One is the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups means a lot to me because I really love it when there's effort made to, to um, to make sure that everything is represented and here it is, you know, we have the doll, we have uh, the, sorry, the, a pretty face, we have the snake, we have the ghost, we have the gems, we have the dragon. I mean, everything is here, the wreath, the castle, and just the way the waters are done. It's just beautiful. I could not do this whole video without showing you a stunning seven of cups. And finally, my favorite card from this deck, which has meant a lot to me, is the ace of cups because that is very strong energy. There's a lot of potential, but it's not all, it comes, it comes with sacrifices. And I love that. I love that this Ace of Cups comes a little bit sharp. And I've been looking at a video where uh, another tarot tuber explains the aces in this deck and she's done a phenomenal job of explaining how they all have a role with each other. And so for me, this, this particular queen holding this, or princess holding this cup, it's very, very kind of like telling of what is the potential going into the cup? And is it becoming something good or is it becoming a poison chalice? And I really, really loved this Ace of cup in that, Cups in that sense. We don't see it often enough where a shadow aspect is also in the ace you know aces are full of potential but this is the first time where the potential is is a potential for something good or not so good so i'm going to end there i'll put that down there i'm going to end there and just say thank you so much for joining me thank you again nova for your wonderful tag and video i will hopefully see you all again soon and have a wonderful week wherever you are take care now